In this question, I'm going to call x the height of a randomly chosen adult male. So x is my random variable, unknown mean, mu, and the standard deviation is sigma, which means the variance, which is what has to go here in the brackets, must be sigma squared. We have two unknowns, and we have two pieces of information. So straight away it's looking like a simultaneous equation, this question. Right, we've been told 10% of adult males are taller than 1.8. The probability x is greater than 1.8 is 10%. And the other piece of information is that 5% are shorter than 1.6. So there we go, let's standardize these. So we'll go from x to using z instead. Take the mean, divide by the standard deviation. And same over here. Now we're in a situation where we know the probabilities, we don't know the z values. So the table we want is the percentage points tables. Going to do a quick sketch just to make sure I don't make any errors. So here, the area to the right of this z value is 0.1. It's important we remember the numbers in this table are the area to the left of each z value. So the area to the right is 0.1 then clearly the area to the left must be 0.9. So we're going to look in the tables for a z value which is associated with a p value of 0.9. The p value of 0.9 gives us 1.282 for z. So this is 1.282. Same procedure over here. Less than this set value is really small, 0 0.05. Because it's less than a half, it must be on the left-hand side. So that little area is 0 0.05. This set value is 1.6 take mu over sigma. We're now going to look in the tables and see what it is. However, in the tables, the probabilities don't get as small as 0 0.05. The smallest probability is 0 0.5. So we've got to use the symmetry of the normal distribution here. And look at the other side, where that probability or area there is 0 0.05. And this value here is going to be minus 1 times this z value. We know this is negative because it's on the left. So this will be the same number but positive instead of negative. So let's find it. One more time, all these values are area to the left of a z value. So the area to the left of this z value is all of that. Which must be 0 0.95. So that's the p-value I'm looking at. 0 0.95. Okay, it doesn't show up in this table, so we go down to the next one. And there it is, 0 0.95, 1 1.645. So 1.645, just checking, was it? Yes, 1.645 is this said value here. But ours, we knew it was on the left. So we know it was negative 1.645. So here are our two simultaneous equations that we're now going to solve to find mu and sigma. To solve these, I'm going to start by multiplying both of them by sigma. So this one becomes 1.8 minus mu is 1.282 sigma. And the other one, 1 1.6 minus mu, becomes minus 1.645 sigma. 
going to call that equation 3, I'm going to call that equation 4. If I now subtract these equations, mu will disappear. So I'm going to do th equation 3, take away equation 4. On the left hand side, I'm going to be left with 0 0.2. And on the right hand side, 2.927 sigma. So sigma is 0 0.2 divided by 2.927, which is 0 0.0683 to three significant figures. I'm going to store that number on my calculator and use it to find mu. So going back to, I'm going to choose equation three. I'm going to rearrange it. So mu will equal 1.8 take away 1.282 times sigma. And using the value stored in my calculator, I get 1.71 to three significant figures. So there's the mean and the standard deviation.